Good afternoon. My name is Bruce Bolger, and I'm the founder of the Enterprise Engagement Alliance. And I'm pleased to be here today with Darwin Hansen, CEO uh, and founder of TM Evolution, uh, to demonstrate to people who are interested either on this live recording or, uh, again, on the EEA channel, probably starting as early tomorrow, the People Value Impact Calculator. And this is for organizations, investors, C-suites, boards, HR, sales, marketing managers, really anybody who needs to measure the actual impact of their people engagement investments or related investments uh, on financial results, but also on the purpose and goals of the organization or of the specific initiative. And uh, so as a brief little introduction, um, this technology built by TM Evolution uh, and customized for the Enterprise Engagements application uh, is, is a part of a new membership offering. It comes with the corporate uh, enterprise membership at no cost, and it's available to, to others at a cost. Um, and why? Because we're leading the world, uh, I believe, in the shift to stakeholder management and a new approach to corporate sustainability reporting that's compliant with the European law to outlaw, in effect, greenwashing. Uh, and I think we are the first organization out there that, since we were founded 15 years ago, that is specifically focused on the implementation and measurement and reporting aspects of a stakeholder-focused approach to, to business, which enhances returns for investors by creating value for customers, employees, supply chain and distribution partners, communities, and the environment. And this technology that Darwin, uh, I, I can credit with having created, really helps do that. So uh, we're not here to talk about the EEA, but we are here to remind you of all the free services we provide under the guise of stakeholder capitalism. We invest in creating technologies and solutions like these to help make organizations create new value through people. And I always have to thank uh, our customers uh, because our customers over these years uh, have prompted us and pushed us to develop new tools and new ways to support them and to provide solutions to their clients. So uh, my hat's off to them and we always thank them. So Darwin, I am now going to hopefully uh, stop this um, share for a moment uh, and ask you a little bit. Um, and Darwin, there you are. Uh, Darwin Hansen, once again, thank you. you know, as you know, I came to you after the Enterprise Engagement Alliance ran a series of webinars this fall, finding really surprising waste in la labor management relationships. Need we say more about the recent automotive strike? really terrific marketing experts on the show talking about really the, the, the big waste in marketing because the wrong things are being measured. Uh, Dave Ulrich, one of the leaders in, in, in really human resources management and systems, basically making it clear that, you know, a lot of companies are trying, but very few have really moved to a strategic and systematic approach. Uh, and even job design, the critical thing of what people do every day is done with almost very little expertise or measurement and impact. So I came to you <laughs> knowing about your technology and wow, your technology could really help companies rapidly and quickly, either on a minute or broad or stakeholder approach uh, and really analyze where value is created, where waste is occurring and the impact of human capital or marketing or sales or any initiatives on long-term actual results, purpose and goals. So my question to you is, uh, you developed this 10 years ago. Um, and I guess you developed it to um, help companies, you know, help you correlate various factors in determining compensation. And I, you described recently an application in the diversity, equity, and inclusion area. Could you explain that before we actually go into the demo? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on uh, today. Um, essentially, what I've been using this technology for is to gain an understanding and help uh, my clients gain an understanding of their organization and the correlations between the programs that they create and the um, income and the revenue that, that's being produced by the organization. So recently, um, I worked with an organization that do a DE&I study um, where we were looking at, at different um, uh, groupings 
Um, we use the EO one as a basics basis and a start of the groupings of their employees into different you mean categories. The equal and opportunity we wanted to see commission? how. Just to clarify, equal opportunity commission yes, data. Yes, exactly. Please, okay, go yes. ahead. Exactly, exactly. To gain an understanding of any correlation that may exist or may not exist between their um, diversity um, um, profile and their revenues that they're being that, that are being generated. Um, so we and we started out mainly by looking at their diversity in terms of these individual groups, and then we we expanded it out to additional groups um, by looking at looking at job families and and other groups of employees just to try to make sure that diversity was a, um, a primary goal, and actually the the goal was actually being achieved through the programs that they've created. And of course, one of the things that we found, which is an, a normal thing to see, was that diversity changes depending on the level in your organization. So at the highest level, diversity was kind of low. So it was relatively low. And at the lowest level, diversity was really high. And so what we were trying to test there and look for correlations is to determine if there was a essentially a ceiling, a glass ceiling on diversity as you moved up into the organization, not necessarily for each individual group because the groups themselves looked pretty good. But we wanted to make sure that diversity wasn't being uh, hindered as you moved up through the organization. So those are the kind of things that we, we looked at and correlated and created um, analyses uh, on. And quickly, this isn't the purpose of the webinar, but what did you find? Was there's kind of a glass ceiling? Did diversity collapse up going up? You know, this was the first time that they had performed this study. So this study is, ne needs to be done longitudinally so that we can look at it over time to see if their programs actually make any impact and change. But it didn't appear that there was a, uh, a tremendous glass ceiling, although we did have some indication for the sales team that maybe they needed to think more in terms of diversity as they were building and as they were as they were um, uh, growing their their sales force. Because that that's the part where you notice, you know, that usually in an organization, the sales force is the highest paid group in the in the company. It probably should be um, as you want sales. But um, they were also the least diverse of the group. And so when you look at that, you're thinking, uh, why is that? Why? Why would that be different than the rest of the groups? And so that was kind of one of the aha moments. Well, this yeah. is, um, and, and the, the really the point we want to make here, folks, is the technology is designed to make that easy. Um, and I want to mention that management consultants are really a prime uh, beneficiary of this because you're a management consultant. And that's what you're using it for, because it provides, as you'll see, a management consultant, rapid ways to use data effectively. So let's go and show uh, Darwin before we actually show you the software, because it's so simple. It's almost uh It'll take two minutes to show you if you can watch the weather. If you can get a weather channel on your app, you can almost use this uh, technology. But why don't we first show um, the spreadsheets? Because the idea of this is that you actually develop your own data on just good old fashioned spreadsheets. And we did this to actually demonstrate this. We took a company that I had worked for. I can't mention the name. Uh, and we actually constructed in under one week of man hours and we'll show you at the end, it's actually mind-boggling how little time it takes to do this if you set your mind to it, where you get all of the critical data that you're going to need, those of you who are big companies, for the European Union Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, and we've actually used those in this. So if you could expand that screen, please, uh, or maybe you can't. Um, Basically, this is divided into stakeholders, okay? So if you look at the bottom of the sheet there, you'll see financials and C-suite. That's the template here. Now, we want to make it clear, you can do anything you want with this. You can create any approach that you want. Um, so if you want to measure something completely different, um, if you want to measure the potential return on investment of, an, of, a, of a new um, lithium plant um, in northern Minnesota, you could technically do that as well, those of you who are analysts. So what we did here is we used the framework of the European Union law, because laws are always a big driver, right? And it's an anti-greenwashing law. So basically what this enables you to do is put in, in different sheets, right, for, for C-suite, companies, I mean, customers, employees, distribution partners, 
all of the critical data you're going to need to be able to track, not only for the European law, but also these are metrics that you're going to need to run your business anyway. So the idea is to turn compliance into an opportunity. So let's quickly run down that before we show you the technology. Um, so you could basically put in here for each year, your for your objectives are you're going a little fast, please. Um, Darwin, I just wanted to quickly highlight these things. So objective, you could basically set, this is where you can put in qualitative objectives. Um, what were we trying to accomplish in year one? Okay, we were really focused on making employee engagement higher. That was one of our number one objectives, okay, let's say. Or number two, it could be customer service. That's a big focus. Or number three, it could be, it could be anything that you want. And then you create a grading system where you allow the relative stakeholders to actually grade it. Then you can see all of this other information are things that you might want to track in financial indices based on the type of company you are. So you might want to look at book value, total cost, net income, share price, share anything that you want to correlate and for which you have data, you can do. And as I said, we took a pretty good sized company and we were able to get all that data in there over, I believe it was a four year period actually in under a week of man hour. So let's end this, what well, means one person less than a week. If you've got the data and you should, every, most stakeholders have the data or stakeholder leaders, you can get it in there. So then moving on, you know, based on the analysis that you might wanna do, C-suite compensation, and you can put in everything you want, right? Whatever it is you want. This is, we've given you ideas based on these, the law and human and also ISO standards, but go to town. But you've got to be consistent from year to year. And if you're going to comply with the law, you also have to be uh, consistent with that. Uh, we provide complete information um, on the, the law as well. So C-suite demographics, this gets into all of the elements that you might face there, as well as uh, terminations and whatnot. And then moving on, impact estimates. This is a qualitative score where you basically get key stakeholders to explain to you in a survey. It can be done multiple different ways. And we explain it. We provide a help manual, by the way, and it explains all of this. It's pretty concise where you basically go in and you say, OK, how to different stakeholders, what will happen to the company short and long term if we cut way back in that area? What will happen? What will happen in that area if we allow a strike to occur? What's the impact? Is it one, two, five, ten? Using that same one to ten scale. And this enables you over time to identify sources of value and sources of weakness. So, for instance, if you see uh, on your anal analysis that um, there's a, a, we got a ten, on a, I mean, a very low employee engagement score, right? And yet we've seen that that has a big impact on customer engagement then we know we got a problem. We know we're going to get hit. So then finally, governance. This covers all the areas that the European law or U.S. regulations might ask you to disclose. And so that's that. And we can race through the others quickly. Customers, if you just want to run to that. So here, again, you can put in whatever you want. But again, it's the same idea. What are your objectives? What are your compete performance indicators for, for marketing, right? And then things like, and by the way, cal are you going a little fast again, please, sir? Um, and we do want to be right on time, so nothing wrong to hurry me along. Uh, but just quickly to understand, um, like you can put in revenues, total active customers, total customer costs, percent of revenues, okay, of your customer costs. And the system enables you to actually build in calculations. So we can provide some automatically, but you can build your own. And if they're really complicated, Darwin's team is there available to help you do that. So you can create an ongoing way of managing your business the way you want to manage it. So don't look at this and go, I don't want that. Fine. Give us what you want. So anyway, marketing cost per customer, percent referrals, percent complaints, and then here are all your costs. And you can be quite specific. You can do your incentive travel and merchandise programs. You can do your recognition. Put in those numbers because you can correlate over time their impact on customer engagement. And we're going to show you examples of that. And you can actually look, did this over time really have an impact? And then, of course, I can also see, well, how important would that impact be based on well, it's not, if, if, it's, if it's an administrative issue and the impact isn't that high, well, maybe you can cut some costs there, you know, blah, blah, blah. It helps you make better decisions. Uh, customer, character, uh, uh, customer characteristics, excuse me. Again, it's all up to you. But this could be your number of, I believe, in a holistic approach to marketing where you basically base everything on your funnel. You know, and you're one, you're, even if you're a consumer company, you got a funnel. 
So this gives you all of the different information along with demographics. And then the same thing, impact estimates, customer satisfaction scores, number of actual referrals. You know, I don't, you know, God bless the, uh, the net promoter scores. That's all well and good. I think the best thing to track is referrals. That's the best thing. But of course, this enables you to put in your NPS scores as well or anything you want. And again, governance. You can do all of this by customers, the same thing, lawsuits. And you're going to need to do that for the European law in many cases if you're a big company or a subsidiary of one or in the supply chain of one. So this is all good to know. So quickly, employees. And then we're going to get to the demo. We're going to be right on time because the demo is so simple. But here, once again, what are your objectives, revenues, key performance indicators, compensation, average base pay, just all you can, again, break it down by all your different strategies, your demographics, all of that good stuff. Keep going. Impact estimates. Uh, and again, we were able to do this for a mid-sized company in one week, one week of man hours, person hours, sorry. Governance, same thing. Uh, moving on to distribution partners. Uh, and remember, all of these can be correlated. And you can put in formulas for your own metrics. And then you'll be able to correlate them visually. That's the key. So once again, you can look at all of your different costs related to your distribution management and run all of the same correlations. Now, one important caveat because of the security feature in uh, Darwin, get ready, you're going to be the, doing the demo. But could you show them our completed report, the one that we did in under a week, uh, Darwin, um, just to give people an idea um, before you do the demo, while I explain that, uh, again, these can all be segregated. So you might say, well, even though you get it in a week, we can't do it in a week. We want to start with human resources, or we want to start with sales, or we want to start with marketing, or we want to start with our Delaware manufacturing division. You can do that. There's no requirement. It's a tool like Excel, right? So this is a report all filled in for a mid-sized company of all their revenues, their income, their total costs. And this is what, over a four-year period, or was it three-year? I, I forget exactly, but uh, over an extended period. Uh, see all, all of those numbers built in four years. Uh, four years. And so, and then of course they had their three different objectives for each one all rated. So this is how, so you can actually compare book value to CEO compensation. Um, how did the training program affect employee engagement or how did it affect referrals? What was the correlation of referrals with the incentive programs? You can literally drag and drop any of these numbers to kind of look at them. And it can be a little overwhelming. And this is not Moses coming down from the mountain. Data is only a guidepost, just like AI. It's not the end. If we make that the end result, we are going to be living in a scary world. But as a tool to help make better decisions, this can really help you visualize things. So just in the way Darwin explained uh, where with that client, he was actually helped them to transparently see whether DEI was being implemented equitably in that organization from a pay standpoint, this enables you to make those correlations. So um, why don't we spin up? I think we agreed we're going to do a quick demo and then show people some of the different types of reports, right? And I want to tell you folks, this might... Yeah, and one of the things... Please. Go ahead, Bruce. The one thing that I wanted to highlight too is that even, I mean, we talked about the different uh, stakeholders that you could have in here, but you can also have, you know, any number of data elements, uh, fields that are in here. So Bruce said you could fill all these in if you want, and you absolutely can, or you could fill two in. You don't, it, don't let the, the number that we have as a, as a template uh, limit your idea of what you can put in here. It could be the template information. It could be two fields. You could just simply put in two fields and we could do a correlation between those. And you could you could uh, analyze those all day long. Or you could put in several hundred fields. Doesn't really matter. Whichever, however you want to build that, that's up to you. That's it. So uh, Sorry. while you set up that, I'll just reinforce that point by saying that Again, we created this whole stakeholder approach um, just to show, because a lot of people say what a big job it is. Oh my gosh, this can't be done. Oh, oh. no, it can be done. And a lot of companies, I believe, are going to overpay for consulting services for the EU law simply because it seems so daunting. You're going to go, holy cow. But we and our colleagues in Europe have done this. Uh, and um, so 
we know that it is not even for a Fortune 500 company. Obviously, it's not going to be a weak job. But once you compile it, the other thing is you can upload the information anytime you want, automatic. Once the template is set up, 99% of the time you upload that template and your numbers are refreshed and updated. So we're going to give you right now a demo of creating a couple of reports on the fly. And I think that we agreed that one of them might be to show um, the relationship between um, share prices to executive pay. That's something that investors might want to look at. And as you remember, there are all sorts of people who could look at that. So he's going to calculate. He's going to show us a report. This is how you do it. So, so Bruce, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to do customer ROI. Okay. Um, versus revenue. Okay. So what I'm at is I'm saying, okay, so let's see what happens to our customer ROI as, it, as we relate it to the revenues that we have. So... All I really want to do is put those two fields, find those two fields and put those on my chart. Once they're on my chart, I'm going to name it and I'm going to call this customer engagement. ROI. And essentially, customer engagement ROI is the R, is a formula, just like human capital ROI, that measures the return on investment against your sales and profits of your right. uh, of your customer, of your marketing costs, all your marketing costs. You could do this just for your customer service costs. You could do this just for your uh, any cost. But we just chose to, to use the customer engagement ROI. So what do we see here, uh, Darwin? So what, what we're seeing here is we look at our our uh, customer uh, ROI, which is the orange line uh, against the blue line, which is our total revenues. And we can see that as our customer um, return on investment changes, it's actually following very nicely with our revenues. So that's telling us that we need to continue to invest in our uh, customer engagement programs and as we continue to invest in those programs, it actually moves the needle for the revenue. So we wanna make sure that we're, we're staying focused on that in this example. So this is really an investment of, this is a way to quickly visualize that, hey, something we're doing here is right, but then of course we wanna yeah. analyze more deeply what it is. So um, oh, on a totally different sure. note. Our program's working. Yeah, we can look yeah, at this and say program our program's working. working. Yep. So you were yep. gonna show and another then, example. Uh, Yes, I want to show another example. So one of the things I wanted to uh, highlight as well is that this is a privilege-based system. So I logged in as just the customer in the in our example, and the customer can only see the customer's data. That's and the marketing executive, the person in charge. That's of the marketing market. executive person, yes. Now, I also might want to look at it from a financial perspective um, to look at the... Um, the, the um, CEO pay versus the share price that we had talked about. So I also want to do that. So I'm now I'm logging in as a financial person who has the ability to see that data. So we can split the data up by the people that need to see it. Now, we'll also show you here in a minute that you can have somebody that looks at all the data and they'll see all of the, the different um, uh, reports that we have in there as well. So let me do this one first, where I want to look at CEO pay versus the share price. So I name this. So it's just simply a matter of dragging the fields that I want, naming the, the report and saying, OK, and it saves the report. So next time I come in, I'll see this report and I'll be able to see what has happened if the data has changed. On this so particular report again, we're looking at um, the orange line is the share price and the blue line is our base pay for our executives. And as we look at this, we can see that there is a correlation between the pay that we, that we give our executives and the share price. Now, we can also see that there's a little bit of, a, of an extraordinary 
drop in the pay that created an, a, a, a larger drop in the share price. So we can look at this and say, okay, great. Like most analyses, when we, do, when we look at it, we can say, basically, this is telling us the right story, but we have some anomalies in here that we may want to look at uh, further to say there's a, a, a larger drop, a larger than expected drop because of something that might have happened. Maybe this is where we changed CEOs in the organization. Maybe this is where um, something happened with our pay, a bonus wasn't paid out because of some particular event that happened. And that event showed up in our share price. So Darwin, since um, we're, but um, let's show them a few other, record. so why don't you, yep, let's sorry. show them a quick, a uh, few other reports real quickly, because we're running out of time and, and, and that'll take a minute. So I'm going to start summing up. So first off, this is a platform designed for investors, for C-suites, for boards, for management consulting companies, for CFOs, for anybody who manages people investments who wants to see the return. Uh, it also in, it's enables companies to put in whatever data they want, however little, however much, and correlate it over time and easily update it by uploading templates. So I'm going to stop right there for a moment. So show us some of these different reports real quickly and what they might indicate. And by the way, these are all based on this company uh, that we created in uh, under five days uh, with all the data necessary to generate these reports and many, many more. So go ahead. So um, these reports now, uh, we we can put on as many reports as you'd like. So you can get really in depth in the number of analyses that you do. Um, but these are just a couple that we wanted to highlight to show some of the correlations that we were looking at as we were looking at this data. So you can see from, from this one, we're looking at the average tenure of our executives, uh, which is the orange line, versus the net income that has been derived from those executives. And we can see that, that as that average tenure has changed, so has our net income. And it's important to see that as that moves up, um, that our revenue actually moves up, that our income moves up. Um, so that's what we're trying to uh, show with this one to see if there was a correlation. We also looked at our, from our customer um, perspective to see what happens to our digital media. Is that actually producing results? And our digital media in the orange versus our total revenues. And we can see as we're putting money into our digital media program, we're actually producing revenues. And these numbers um, so another can't be gained, and the numbers can't be gained because the revenues are coming from the financial side. So exactly. this is great to check. Exactly. So, yeah. So the real numbers showing real results, and that's that's the important part. Um, and for this particular um, graph, I just wanted to show that there is a way. Well, when you put these graphs on, we can put multiple things on the graph at one time, and then as you click on the the um, key over here on the right, um, you can turn on or off any of these to see more in depth about what's happening. For example, in this one, we're looking at total revenues versus customer experience, and I've turned off the employee survey score. Now, if I want to flip that, I can actually turn on the employee score, turn off the customer, and I can see the correlation between those. So that allows you to add multiple things onto your graph and then turn them on or off as they um, as you would like to see the correlations that you might want to see, to see how they and, work all together and to and see how they case, work independently. And in this case, it shows a correlation between both and revenues, doesn't it? Both. Yeah, it does. It shows a correlation between both of them. Yep. So engagement ROI, this is? Engage yep. And so on this particular one, we're looking at survey scores versus the, the human capital ROI. So in, in this particular one, the orange is the human capital R R ROI, what, what return we're getting from human capital, as well as the survey scores that we had for, for this group. And we can, again, see the correlation as it exists in our score, as our scores have risen, so has our R ROI. And these are based on numbers, and not I'm, surveys, not, you know, not putting your finger in the air. So employee and focused uh, objectives. So the final one here, we're looking at we're looking at total revenues versus the objectives. So we had an objective, we call it objective one, um, and we we want to see if that objective has actually 
created and produced revenues for us. And we can see that it it has, but it has at a at a um, the the objectives were lagging the revenues. So what that means is that our objectives are actually um, are predicting our revenues. So we were going really good as with our objectives. We lost our objectives, and the next quarter we actually lost revenue. Then we built up our objectives again, and we were we were doing quite well. And then we dropped down again um, as as we followed through that objectives, as we lost focus on our objectives, and our revenue suffered because of it. So yeah. showing us that we need to um, make sure that we maintain the focus on our objectives, and then we understand that they're actually a, a leading uh, indicator of our revenue. Now, just to wrap up, we just imagine that you can go really go granular because you could really look at your training programs, your incentive, your yes. recognition programs, and you could carefully correlate them over time. And you can even look at their interrelationships, like we're seeing an interrelationship between customer engagement and employee engagement that we didn't necessarily expect. So, um, yes, the one drawback of this, I would say, is the importance of really focusing on what your object. It's a tool to do also crazy stuff. And I can think of a lot of wonky people who would go crazy about looking for correlations. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence is going to be a tool uh, and on our roadmap to help companies down the line use this information. Um, you know, AI, again, gets you 80% of the way there, but you always have to have that human element. So folks, we want to thank you very much uh, for attending uh, this live session or for viewing it in from the comfort of your home office or or whatever. And thank um, Darwin Hansen for uh, really helping to helping us develop a really powerful tool to drive home the point that this is all about you know, stakeholder management is all about creating value. It's all about enhancing returns for investors. This, yeah, we, everyone likes to think it's a warm and fuzzy, and it is, uh, but we're in a capitalist society and we have to prove how we create value. So thanks again, Darwin, um, and uh, all of you, um, thanks again for joining us.